This week, John Hodgson is getting the children to use and develop the story to find out more about how other people behave. Let's see how he gets on. Sorry, but we're in the middle of the game. We can't join in. I wasn't thinking of playing. Good. You do anything during the holidays? No. What about you, Vincent? No, not much. I did something. You don't always go around doing exciting things like you. I didn't do much. Oh, I was in a fire during the holidays. A fire? Yeah. Yeah, I was in a fire. Of course he was, wasn't he? You were in a fire? Yeah, I was in a fire. Everything oh, happens to you, didn't it? What do you mean everything happened to me? Well, I, I went to the... I went to visit my uncle, who works at the local fire station, one Saturday. And uh, while I was there, we got called out. He got called out, and I went along with him. And it was this fire in a house. Mm. Fire in a house. A fire? I, I, I can't remember the house. Of well, course you can't remember was. the house. Tell and us all about it. All right. Where and was the house? I don't know. Of course he doesn't know. Mm. He never does, does he? Would well, well, do you want to hear the story? Yeah. 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 All right, listen then. Well, we, we got the fire and one bloke had already been rescued. Good and boy. he said... Of course. No, he, he got. He, he just, you know, he got mm -hmm. out with the help of the neighbours who come oh, round. Strange. Oh. You never rescued him. And uh, he said there were two more people trapped inside the house, and uh, not by a window. So good when and he went in and got. My him. uncle was, was climbing up the ladder and he slipped. Mm -hmm. Fell back oh. and hurt his back. And you so you him. had to go up yeah. instead. So I Naturally. said, well, I better get up there. So I took one of the respirators from the uh, fire van. Uh, I was up the ladder and into the room. It wasn't too bright. It, it wasn't that bad, you know. It was, it was, it was quite smoky, but I oh. had the respirator. Oh, and then I opened up the door, oh. and then poof, there were all these flames all the way around this room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you oh he's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah. 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 What a marvelous cool, fellow. Lies a lot. You know that's yeah. all true. You yeah. 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 Your uncle was killed years ago. Yeah. 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 You're the oh, biggest liar in yeah. the And there in the corner. And you went round the yeah. outside. Yeah, we get them. Yeah, but yeah. 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 we're not going to get there without yeah. going to ah, play. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on, how did you do it? Oh, fly on wings. Fly on wings. Oh, that's the union. You know it's all true. You're just jealous. We've heard all your lies. What's the matter with all of you? Quietly come around here. Was it any better than last week? Did we get um, it a bit better? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, how can we still improve it even further? Uh, by not all talking at once. That was the biggest trouble, wasn't it? At the end, um, everybody went away at once. Really? Yeah, kind of Mm, you feel it ought to be more gradual? Oh, no, I, th I think oh. it's like, it should be like that, you know. And you know, everybody was talking at the same time. That's our there. biggest trouble. There's not enough thinking and listening to what everybody else is saying. There was a group of about five people who were the only ones who were saying anything. Yes, we relied uh, uh, largely upon a very small group. Well, well, so that, well, how can the others help? By also joining in with their own remarks. And yes, by... Them. Well, some people might just want to sneer. Not be interested and just look on. Mm. You know, find but they like would that. be making a contribution, wouldn't they? By really thinking about the situation, their sneers might even be clearly thought. Would it? Okay, now, can we just go on? Remind me of some <coughs> of the things you said might be going on in his mind uh, after all his friends or all the people he tried to impress 
had left him. Right? The feeling of revenge. The feeling of revenge. Revenge against whom? Well, the club it's, uh, well, the youth club itself. Now, let's take the thought of revenge. Because this is really what Peter Gint in the story did, anyway. He thought about revenge. Now, let's see what sort of revenge we think this Peter Gint is going to have in his mind. Wait a minute. Where is he? He's in a youth club. Let's take that. Let's think of some of the ways of revenge that we're going to think of. Well, but first of all, go into new groups and start to talk about different ways of revenge. If you can think of more than one, fine. But let's hit, see if we can all get one or two ideas of ways in which he might have his revenge on those people who'd attacked him. New groups, go. Straight away. Right, off you go. Yes, look, I think he'd um, take his revenge on breaking up the jukebox because that's the main part of the He could start fights, smash all the lights. I don't think it's more of a coward. Yeah, he is really. Yeah. I think he'd set fire to the place. No, I think he'd break the jukebox because, you know, there are loads of people like the jukebox. That's what makes one the youth club, isn't it? It's not really. Because the people don't... Look, I go to a youth club and we the youth Yes, all right, go on. Yeah. We wouldn't survive, honestly, right. because it's Let's done all the time. Jukebox. In. Oh, go on. The jukebox is just, you know, just another thing. People play cards, they don't all listen to the jukebox. Mm -hmm. I think you should set fire from the place. Oh, oh, mix, mix the records out, so they, when they put yeah, one record in, they, they get a different record. Or they can put on all the records about... Rest. Now, can I just have you, this group, move to the side, and will you all just turn your chairs inwards? Clearly, go around each group and let's just hear one or two ideas of ways in which Peter Gint is thinking about making his revenge. Can we start here? Well, he's going to ransack the place. Yes. But, yes, well. But we thought if he just um, wrecked the jukebox, it might look as though there'd only been one person. So if he wrecked the whole place and took money, it looked like a whole lot of people had been in and they were real burglars, you know. And it, look more realistic. He's going to wreck the, uh, the youth pl club uh, and take money. Oh, we could um, get some paint. He could paint all over the walls and turn the tables upside down and throw the chairs everywhere. And he could put the records in the wrong order. So when somebody puts their money in for certain a record, they get, the, they get a different one. Uh-huh. Go around to every electrical point or crossing the wires and that, making everything go wrong for them. Mm-hmm. Isn't that going to take quite a lot of time? Well... Yeah, I suppose so. I see. Now, let's, here we've got quite a lot of ideas which we can just start with, and these will lead us on to other things. Here's our youth club, and he's going to come into this, so he's going to smash up things, some of the things. Um, mentioned jukebox, uh, the chairs, the tables, uh, stealing money, windows, painting on the wall. There's quite a lot of ideas there. Let's just take them one at a time. Let's, uh, can I have a volunteer who's going to come into the youth club and uh, start this um, damage underway? Uh, Mopsa, will you start us off? Have you decided? Do you think he's decided before he comes, or is he going to come and then decide? Decide before he comes. Well, can he make for... Yes. Let's, can he make for... The, what's the most obvious thing in this youth club? The jukebox. Can he do that first and make for the jukebox to start with. Let's make this our jukebox. Now, here you are. It's this time of night. You're coming in through the back way. Let's go. Now, everybody watch. See what it is that can be improved upon. What do you think we can use in future uh, when we're working through this, this particular scene? Ah, good, right. 
Um, so far, she's she stopped. She, she was worried about what she could smash it with. What is the? Well, Wait a minute. Chair. Yes, let's see what Mopsa can find first, and then we can have some ideas from you. Well, There's chairs. Any good? Yeah. I think that'd be the best thing, really, because I've never got complaints from here. Let's give you a chair. There. Uh, so there's one fairly near at hand. Any comments about so far? Where are they coming in? She looked as though uh, she was frightened, because if there's... No, as though there's anybody there. There's anybody and that was good? It was good, really. I thought, yes, I thought some of the thought going on in her mind was good. When did she break it for us? That when she sort of... She just came straight through. You know, she'd never tripped over anything, never thought... Well, I, don't, I think, remember what we said, there is a, quite a bit of light really coming not. through. Yes, I think that's fair enough. Well, she did trip halfway, didn't it? Yes. It was like she tripped over something. Wasn't too bad at all, eh? Mm -hmm. What made you lose your concentration when you got down here? Chair. The fact that I didn't have anything to smash it with. I see. Well, can you do it again? And this time she can go right through with it, and let's see what happens. Well, that made an electric effect. Bryce, you have a go. Now, see if Bryce can build on what uh, Mopsa has done and the same thought. Are you ready? Everybody back again to our... Uh, what time of day is it? Let's just sense this. Yes? How much light is there? Moonlight. Very little. There is enough for us to share. Right. Just enough to distinguish... Bryce, go. What do you think you're doing? Oh, I was just uh, having a cup of coffee to come and look at this. A cup of coffee at one o'clock in the morning? Well, there's that shop open now. I felt, I felt, felt thirsty. You know the club's closed, don't you? Well, um, well, the door was open. I thought I can't have a peek. You sure? I'm sure. I think I'd better ask you to come with me. Well, I didn't do it. I just came and have a look, that's all. It's a very late hour to be one. Well, 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 I like walking out at nights. Not in the morning. Do you normally come into the club at this time? No, not normally. I just came and have a look. What happens if money's been missing from the club at this stage? Well, I didn't do anything. But I who's going to get blamed? You see the point, don't you? Well, somebody could have come in from the back. And you see the point. Somebody could have come in, as you did. Let's have a look now at film of two other teachers using improvised drama for slightly different purposes. First we go to a girls' school at Newcastle upon Tyne. And here a class of girls are about to study Romeo and Juliet. Now they could start off in any number of ways. They could have an introductory lesson or go straight to the text or listen to a recording of the play. But the teacher has chosen her own way. Let's watch and ask ourselves if this is a profitable way of spending our teaching time. But first of all, let's remind ourselves of some of the text of that play. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. Nurse, what should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then, tomorrow morning? No, no. This shall forbid it. I have in my hand here 
something which could be almost anything. What could be in this tube? Lipstick. Lipstick, yes. Yes. Drug. Drug. Pills. 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 Drugs. Who would have a tube like this, do you think? Sheila? A doctor. A doctor, yes. A drug peddler? A drug peddler, my goodness, yes. It was a long time ago when this tube was found. What sort of people were doctors a long time ago? Yes. Priests? Priests, yes. A girl of 13, nearly 14. Some of you are 13, aren't you? Yes. yes. A priest gave a girl of your age a tube with some noxious poison in it. I wonder why a priest would do that. <sighs> to save her from something. Yes. What would a priest be wanting to save her from, do you think? Linda? He said the communists were in the land, something like that. And yes. that they were killing off people who were Christians, sort of thing. Yes. And she didn't want you to said die. communists, did you? Yes. This was a long time ago, though, before we even heard of communists. Yes. Any other ideas? Yes, Kay? She might become heathen. Why? Um, what has this to do with it, I wonder? Um, Why would this help her? It would put the sleep to stop her becoming heathen. Oh, I see. And you think the priest might be helping her to do the right thing, rather than to the wrong thing? Possibly. Yes, she <coughs> might be running away from someone. She might be running away from something. And what could she be running away from? Linda? If it's, it was in the olden days, as you said, you could be running away from being forced into a marriage. Yes. And this is exactly what was happening. She was secretly married already. I know some of you have guessed already who this story is about. Who? <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Juliet was about your age. And she was in this dreadful predicament of being married already and having another marriage forced upon her. And the priest knew about the marriage. So he felt it important that he should give her something to avoid the morrow. You go to bed now and get plenty of rest. Uh, you're going to have a trying day tomorrow. Good night, Juliet. Good night, Mother. Good night, Good evening, Madam. Everything will be all right tomorrow, Juliet. Good night. Good night, Mother. when I hear the sound of laughter. It isn't part of me anymore. Oh, I must go up my nose. No! She can't do anything for me now. Too late. What if the poison doesn't work? I'll have to be married then. And what will happen to Romeo? Well, then it'll kill me. Holy man would give me something that'd kill me. And for Romeo's sake, I must do it. Yeah. 
Go get my lady, quickly. The lady? Where's the lady? I don't know. I can't get one minute's peace without being interrupted. Can't you do your jobs properly? Madam. What's wrong? Well, it's been her hand, madam. It's cold. Well, what do you expect when it's been out of the bedclothes? Juliet! Juliet! I think Sister Bridget could feel that those girls will now go to the text with enthusiasm and without fear, because the first experience of the play has been their own words and their own feelings. In the same way, the real feelings of young people can be used to deepen their understanding, through improvised drama, of some current problems. For example, we went to Wall's End Technical School, and there we met some of the older children and the drama teacher, and we asked them if they would use improvisation to explore some problem that they thought to be important. They chose the problem, discussed it, and read the, the appropriate newspapers, magazines, and watched the appropriate television programs. And this is what we saw when we called back there with our cameras a fortnight later. We decided that Vietnam was a an important problem and we wondered if we could achieve some kind of approach that would show the the conflict that must arise in a, a small community of people when they're approached by the Viet Cong, their own people and by a foreign power, the Americans knowing in fact that the Viet Cong were not necessarily patriots but puppets of the Chinese and knowing also that the Americans were not necessarily bringers of gifts, that they might be bringers of harm. Right, just start when you're ready. receiving the Viet Cong agent and listening to him talking and then having to decide whether they were going to betray this particular agent to an American force or not. A very difficult problem, I think, for a number of people. I can't... You fool! Stand up for you won't die! You stand up fool! You bombed our field! Murderer! No! It was the Americans who bombed your field. You. It was the Americans. Listen to me, please. You're a murderer. I'm no murderer. How do you accuse me of murdering? A fellow countryman. I look the same as you. I talk. Why don't the art the same? I've lived the same as you for years. We have tried fighting to save you, yet we don't get much help. What do you think it is? The Americans are using it as a battlefield. So do you, and you don't care about us. You can only live under communist ruling. Under that way you'll have peace and prosperity, plenty of crops. You won't have to worry about bombing and the Americans and what's going to happen next. Who's going to interrogate you and kill you? You've killed half the men already. We killed traitors and that's all. You love your children, don't you? Our children have had to dig trenches. Six foot deep sometimes. And they've got to sit in there hour after hour among the mud and the filth just to protect themselves from the Americans bombing. They don't care, they'll come here and bomb you. They'll smother you with cheap, worthless gifts. And if they do not get your sympathy, your help, they'll come and bomb you. Do you realize that? Your lifeline, cut, just like that. And yet I do not get your support. Who said what can I tell you? No. I don't know. You help! I've got a village to support. Go. You see, you see how it's right. Traitors! Please, leave, leave me alone. Leave. I won't let you go, Ethan. They'll kill you like they killed your father. But mother, the Americans killed father. Quiet! 
Listen. Is it Viet Cong? It's not my man. This way, Sergeant. Come on, George. Right, okay. American. Come on, sit. Everybody sit down. Sit. All right, sit down. Now look, we're your friends. Understand? Americans, friends. You want some chocolate? You want some chocolate? Chocolate? It's good. Chum gum. You want some chum gum? Do you want some chum gum? Chum gum? You might try him with a cigarette, sir. Cigarettes? You've seen Americans smoke cigarettes, haven't you? You want a cigarette? Cigarette? You talk to him, sir. Okay, now you folks. Now then, uh, we men come over here from America, and we bring you food and medical supplies, and you turn your backs on us. Now we know you got one of those Viet Cong men here. We saw him coming. Why do you shield him? He comes and he takes your husbands and your sons. And where do they take them? They take them to the next village. To rob there, to live. Is this what you want from your husbands and sons? To be robbers and thieves? You. Is this what you want from your husband? Is this how you want your son to grow up? Are you? Is this what you want from your wife? Now we come. We bring you food. We bring you medicine. And you turn your backs on us. Now look, if you don't hand this guy over, my leaders are going to be angry. They're going to see you're bad people. And they're going to send the planes and going to drop bombs all over your fields. You don't want that, do you? So hand him over. Come on, you know where he is. Hand him over. Where is he? Do you know? Or maybe it's you. Do you know where he is? Bring her out, George. No, I don't know. I don't want to die now. Bring her out, George. No. No, it's not him. No. Yes, yes. this is the guy. No. Yes, it's no, this it's one. Not him. No. Yes, he's a no. VC. Yes, we're going to shoot him. Got him. This is the. Yes, he's VC. We're going to kill him. It's him. See what happened to VC. So none of you get any ideas. Come on, Sam. He's best dead. out of drama, but if we're thinking in particular of tackling a problem like this, they probably have a greater understanding of the different aspects because they've been involved emotionally inside the very problem.